Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. A logical and systematic approach to solving organic chemistry problems for CSAR net. In the module 8, we will be looking at organic reactive intermediates, generation, stability and the reactivity of carbenes and nitrines. I am Professor Balaji, currently working at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayamprabha, MHRD, New Delhi. So, in this session, we will be looking at the stability reactivity of carbenes and nitrines. Let us look at the first problem. So, in this one, we are going to find out the major product that is formed in the following sequence of reactions. This question was asked in November 2020. So, here we have benzaldehyde and we have ethyl diazoacetate. So, these two compounds are given here. They undergo reaction in the presence of copper chloride to give an intermediate or a product A and which further undergoes some reaction to give product B. So, we are going to find out how the entire reaction actually proceeds, what are the products that is formed in this reaction. So, what is intermediate A, what is product B, we are going to find out. So, here four sets of combinations are given. The first one is a elide like compound is given. So, 1, 2 in 1 and 3 we have a elide like uh, derivative is given and in the final product we have uh, oxalones are given. The positions are only little bit changed and uh, 2 and 4 we have the keto ester is given here it is a beta keto ester and the final product is a either a cyclic lactone or a enone is given. So, these are all the different products that can be formed in the reaction. We are going to find out how the reaction actually proceeds. So, let us look at uh, the first uh, compound that is the ethyl diazoacetate. How it undergoes the reaction we are going to see in the presence of a metal. So, the ethyl diazoacetate when treated with the metal especially the copper chloride, it gives a metal carbonide. And what is a metal carbonide? For our simplicity, we will only talk about a carbene unit. So, here we have a carbon with uh, two electrons. So, this is a uh, six electron species and uh, we will be mainly dealing in this session and uh, the next session mainly about carbenes. So, here these compound these uh, intermediates will have 6 electrons. So, for our simplicity we are only talking about the carbon derivative and this is uh, electrophilic in nature because the carbon here is a electrophilic species because it is having only 6 electrons. So, 8 electron is the most stable one. So, this is having uh, 2 electron less. So, this is uh, electrophilic in nature and we have a benzaldehyde unit here the oxygen has uh, two lone pair of electrons. So, that means that is electron rich in other words that is a nucleophilic one. So, we have an electrophilic uh, species and a nucleophilic species. So, what will happen is these both will react together. So, the nucleophilic carbonyl oxygen of the benzaldehyde reacts with the carbene. This gives a carbonyl elide as shown here. So, this is the first intermediate that will be formed. So, this is uh, a that intermediate A that will be formed in this reaction that is nothing but a carbonyl elide. Elide means we have a positive and the negative charge present on adjacent atoms. So, this is nothing but the carbonyl unit and that is why this is called the carbonyl elide. And this carbonyl elide undergoes 1, 3 dipolar addition. So, this is what is the most crucial one in this particular case. So, this undergoes 1, 3 dipolar addition with benzaldehyde, the second molecule of benzaldehyde to give 1, 3 dioxalane derivative. So, that is what is given here. So, this is 
1, 2, 3 dioxyl and derivative. So, we have 1, 2 and 3. So, 1 and 3 position oxygen is present. So, this is the 1, 3 dioxyl and derivative that is formed in this particular reaction. So, if you look at the overall reaction, the carbonyl ilide is the intermediate A and the 1, 3 dioxaline is the product B. And here, the benzaldehyde reacts in the first step and also in the second step. So, two equivalent of benzaldehydes are used like this and ethyl diazoacetate is converted into the corresponding carbene that is the here we are only showing the carbene derivative. So, this is how the overall reaction proceeds. Let us move on to the next problem. So, here the major product formed in the following reactions are this question was asked in December 2019. So, we have a carbene here, one of the carbene undergoes a reaction to give product A and uh, the second one we also have another carbene, this also undergoes a reaction to give product B. So, we will be looking at a very uh, crucial reaction. In the previous case, we only saw the carbonyl elide formation that means the electrophilic carbon reacts with the nucleophilic oxygen to form a carbon oxygen bond. But in this particular case, we are going to look at another type of reaction which is called the CH insertion reactions. So, these are very, very important reactions of carbene derivatives. So, here the products that are given are basically formed by the CH insertion reaction. So, A uh, that is the first uh, starting material uh, or this carbene gives a product A and the second one gives product B. So, these are all the four way combinations of the different products that will be formed and where this carbene will insert, whether the carbene will insert on this particular carbon or uh, a carbon which is adjacent to the oxygen or it will insert on the oxygen itself or it will add insert on the carbon that is adjacent to the oxygen or it will insert on the this carbon like uh, we have various uh, carbons on to which this particular carbene can insert. So, intramolecular CH insertion reactions are the important reactions of carbene. So, we have various combinations and we are going to find out how each product or which product will be formed in this kind of transformation reactions. So, if you look at uh, <coughs> the product combination in 1, if we start from this carbene carbon 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4 and this is 5. So, we have 1 5, there is one particular uh, combination that is available. So, that is what here we can say this is the methyl unit that is present. So, the methyl unit is on the second carbon that is how we say and here this carbon and this carbon form. So, we go with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, these are all the 5, uh, 1, 5 uh, cyclization or the CH insertion is possible to give this particular product. Similarly, if you look at the second one. Uh, we can start with the carbene as number 1 and 2, 3, 4 and we have multiple phi's. We have one phi here and we also have another phi here. So, we are going to see whether it uh, inserts on this particular carbon or it inserts on this carbon. That is what we are going to see. So, that is how uh, it is actually given here in this uh, different type of product. So, if you look at the second one, we have the 6 membered ring with oxygen. So, that is given here this unit and now this carbene add, uh, adds to this carbon. This is the fifth carbon here it adds. So, that is how the cyclization takes place to give a tricyclic system like this. Similarly, we have various combinations of uh, the first insertion and the second insertion reactions separately. So, we end up with a different type of product. We are going to see what is the product that will be formed. So, if you look at the first reaction, so here uh, we have already seen carbenes are basically electrophilic in nature and we have an oxygen atom which has lone pair of electrons. So, that means oxygen is electron rich. So, here because of the presence of the oxygen, what happens is like uh, this 
oxygen activates the neighboring carbon atom for insertion. So, in the first case what happens is the neighboring oxygen atom activates the H A bond. So, this bond is being activated. So, when this bond is being activated this carbon will actually add to this particular carbon atom. So, that is what we are actually talking about here. But the bond H B which is far away from this particular one that means, if we go from the numbering this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. So, the H B bond is a little bit far away from the oxygen. So, that is the reason the oxygen's lone pair cannot activate this particular bond. So, in this first case what happens is when this carbene is present here this particular axial H A bond is activated. So, this activation leads to the sigma star antibonding orbitals of H A bond. So, this is the sigma star antibonding orbital which is empty. So, this is being activated by the lone pair of electrons from the oxygen atom. So, this is activated. So, now this is ready for forming that C C bond this particular carbon atom. So, that is how the first bond is formed between the carbon that is uh, actually present on this one. So, we end up with uh, this kind of uh, cyclization uh, the CH insertion that is happening in this particular case. So, when we move on to the second reaction the position of the uh, carbene is given uh, differently in the second one and we also have another cyclic system that is present here due to which the hydrogen bond which is adjacent to the oxygen is not actually activated, but it is deactivated. So, that is the reason this carbene now cannot form a bond on this particular carbon atom. So, the CH insertion cannot happen on this particular carbon atom where the HA is present. So, but no such destabilization is present on this H B carbon atom. So, this carbon atom can now undergo the cyclization by the carbene. So, that is how in the second case what happens is the carbene inserts on this particular carbon atom and we end up with the cyclic system as shown here. So, these are all the two products that is formed in the carbene insertion reaction. Let us move on to the next problem. So, in this problem the major product formed in the following sequences are like uh, there is a diazo ester is given here. Uh, this is nothing but the beta keto esters diazo derivative and this is reacted with rhodium acetate, rhodium tetraacetate, dirhodium tetraacetate to give a compound A and this compound undergoes reduction sodium cyanoborohydride is the tri, uh, sodium <coughs> sodium cyanoborohydride the reagent under acidic conditions gives a product b so here uh, various combinations of the products are given this question was asked in june 2018 uh, let us look at the first product we have a five member drink product here and in the second also we have a 5 membered ring product. In the third one and in the fourth one we have a 6 membered ring product. So, we have two types of product possible that is 1 5 type cyclization or the CH insertion is possible. Another one is 1 6 type cyclic CH insertion is also possible. So, there are two types of competitive reactions that are possible we are going to see which one is the most favored one and based on that we are going to predict what is the product that will be formed. So, if 5 membered is the preferred product then it should be either 1 or 2. If it is a 6 membered one it should be either 3 or 4. So, we have to find out what is the first intermediate. Once we decide the first intermediate then we have to see what is going to be the second intermediate. In the first combination we have the carbonyl that is being reduced to the corresponding hydroxy derivative. Sodium cyanoborohydride is a very weak reducing agent. So, in other words it will only reduce carbonyl units. Ester cannot be reduced. So, uh, the second in the first case the ester uh, intact is a probable product. But if you look at the B, 
we have both the carbonyl and the esters are reduced to the dihydroxy derivative. So, this combination is not possible when we use sodium cyanoborohydride. So, we can clearly say this product can be ruled out. In other words, this combination can be ruled out. Similarly, if you extend the same one, the fourth one combination also will be ruled out because there also the cyanoborohydride reduces both the carbonyls and ester which generally does not take place. So, we are left with only two products we have to identify whether it is 1 or 3. In other words, we have to find out whether it is a 5 member cyclization or a 6 member cyclization. So, that is the only thing we have to confirm. Once we confirm, then between 1 and 3, we can easily find out what is the correct product. So, let us look at uh, the first reaction. So, here again, whenever we have the diazo derivative and we are using a metal, especially in this particular case, dirhodium tetraacetate uh, as a uh, uh, catalyst this generates the metal carbonide derivative. So, for simplicity we will only show the carbene uh, that is formed in these particular cases. So, the nitrogen is lost as the nitrogen gas minus N2 happens. So, that is the reason this reaction actually gives a carbene. So, once the carbene is formed as we know like a radical reaction the carbene also undergoes insertion reaction. So, there are two places either it is the fifth carbon or the sixth carbon. So, these are all the most probable one and here we had shown both 5 and 6 are possible. Let us see which one actually happens. So, when we uh, look at the cyclization, uh, if it is 1, 5 CH insertion, then we end up with this particular uh, derivative as shown here and if it is a 1, 6 CH insertion, basically it is a CH insertion reaction. So, the carbene adds to either this carbon or adds to this carbon. So, that is the two difference. So, if it is adding to the fifth carbon, we end up with the top one. If it adds to the sixth carbon, we end up with the bottom one. So, how the reaction actually proceeds? If you look at the transition state, the transition state clearly tells whether it is going to be the 1, 5 or 1, 6. So, here what happens is the interaction between the empty p orbital. So, the carbene carbon has empty p orbital. So, that and the sigma electrons in the CH bond. So, there are sigma electrons on this CH bond. There is empty p orbitals here. So, these two has to overlap in the transition state before the insertion is actually complete. So, in other words, the hydrogen and this uh, there is a three membered ring like uh, transition state is formed and this leads to the transfer of the hydrogen from here to here. So, that is why this is called the CH insertion and we end up with a basically a 5 membered ring in this particular case. So, this is more feasible in the case of 5 membered ring and not in the 6 membered ring. So, that is the reason most of the CH insertion reactions follow 1 phi or the 5 membered CH insertion is the most preferred one. So, now we know exactly what is going to be our final product. So, it is the first combination where we have the 5 membered ring as the final product. So, we have the corresponding 5 membered ring uh, is the first intermediate or the first stage product and now this undergoes sodium cyanoborohydride based reduction. So, what type of reduction will actually occur that also we have to see. If you look at uh, the final product that is formed here, this bond and this bond are in the same side or in other words, it is a cis orientation is the one we have seen. So, how a cis uh, product will be formed? If you look at very carefully, uh, we are going to follow a particular model that is the Felkin and model to explain how this reduction actually takes place. So, here the anti periplanar effect is responsible for the product formation. So, uh, this particular Felkin and model is used for a carbonyl reduction where an electron withdrawing group here in this particular case an ester that is present. So, whenever there is a electron withdrawing group that is present and we are going to reduce a carbonyl group we follow this particular model that is the polar Felkin and model. This is different from the Cram model and uh, 
how the nucleophile is going to attack. So, nucleophile here is a hydride anion that will be added to this particular carbonyl during the reduction. So, here is the projection formula for how the reduction will actually take place. So, R s is nothing but the small alkyl group, R m is the medium alkyl group, R is the carbon onto which the carbonyl group is present. So, these are all the three uh, alkyl groups that are present in the system and the x is uh, actually kept perpendicular to the carbonyl group. So, this is what is basically the uh, polar felkin and model and now we are going to predict from where the hydride is going to attack, whether the hydride will attack from this side or it will attack from the other side. So, we have two places, one is from the small alkyl group, another one is from the medium sized alkyl group. When the nucleophile attacks from the medium sized alkyl group, what happens is there is a steric interaction which actually prevents the hydride addition from that direction. So, that is the reason this reaction actually follows the nucleophile attacking from the small alkyl group side is the one that is happening and we end up with the corresponding alcohol as shown here. So, we end up with the cis derivative in this particular case. So, if you look at uh, little bit more in the molecular orbital level, the nucleophiles acceptor sigma star orbitals are basically aligned parallel to both the pi and pi star orbital of the carbonyl. So, here is our carbonyl unit C double bond O is present here and the nucleophile actually attacks from this side or this side uh, that is how it actually this is uh, both uh, parallel to the pi and the pi star orbitals of the carbonyl unit. This is the nucleophile which is given at the top and this provides actually stabilization to the incoming anion because the pi to pi star or uh, pi and pi star orbital aligning with the sigma star orbital of the carbonyl unit is the driving force or how the nucleophile attacks that is determined by this particular diagram. So, that is how we say in the polar felkin and model we are getting the cis product. Let us move on to the next one. So, here we are going to see the major product formed in the following reaction. So, here we have a diazo carbonyl compound is given as a starting material. Again rhodium, uh, dirhodium tetraacetate is used as a catalyst and in the presence of a dichloromethane on heating gives what is the product. We are going to see there are four different products are given and uh, this question was asked in December 2015. So, we have uh, various uh, type of product uh, that are formed in these reactions. We are going to see how the reaction actually proceeds. So, what is the first step as always whenever we have a, a diazo compound when treated with uh, rhodium metal we end up with a carbene or the metal carbonate. So, there is a loss of nitrogen atom is the first step leading to the formation of the carbene. So, that is how we end up with the carbene unit that is formed. So, once the carbene unit is formed, the carbene is electrophilic in nature. Uh, previously also we have seen when the benzaldehyde reacted with the carbene, we end up with a carbonyl elide derivative. So, similar to that we can also see here we have an oxygen which is electron rich that is nucleophilic and we have a carbene which is electrophilic in nature. So, these two can easily form a bond. So, that is very obvious we can actually expect that to happen. So, that is what actually happens. So, the carbene uh, is uh, forming the C O insertion product. So, here the C O insertion is nothing but the oxonium elide. In the previous case we have the carbonyl unit. So, that was the carbonyl elide. Here we have the oxonium elide because oxygen is having a positive charge and this is an elide plus and minus charges are present on adjacent uh, atoms. So, this is the product that will be formed and uh, cyclization happens here. So, basically what we have to very carefully look at is whether the product is a 1 5 product or a 1 6 product. So, these are all the different type of product that are possible because this oxygen can also activate this benzylic carbon. So, if it activates the benzylic carbon, then what the product we will get is going to be the 1,6 insertion product. 
So, that insertion is between a carbon and carbon. So, here the 1 6 insertion is between carbon and carbon, but the 1 5 insertion is between carbon and oxygen. So, this is the one thing we have to keep in mind. Whenever there is a heteroatom involved, then they take a precedence over the normal carbon carbon insertion reaction. So, we will see that why or what is the reason for that. So, now what is going to be the next step? The oxonium elide now will undergo a concerted 1 2 sigmatropic rearrangement. This rearrangement is called Stephen shift or Stephen rearrangement. So, here we have the exocyclic benzyl unit. So, the benzyl unit is lost as a benzyl cation and we end up because we have a positive charge on the oxygen. In other words, we have an oxonium derivative. Oxonium derivative is electron deficient now and it has to actually uh, stabilize because oxygen is electron negative. It does not want to keep the positive charge on it. So, this but when the carbon oxygen bond cleaves, the oxygen retains the bonded electron. So, we end up with the oxygen getting neutralized with its charge, but uh, it generates a benzyl cation. But carbon is uh, quite comfortable with having a positive charge. And one more thing, when we have a benzyl system, the aromatic pi electrons also can stabilize the carbocation. In other words, we have a extended uh, distribution of positive charge over the entire ring system. So, that is a quite stable intermediate and that is the reason this CO bond is broken. And we end up with a anion and once we have an anion and we also have a cation. In other words, we have a benzyl cation and we have a carb anion. So, obviously, we can expect this benzyl cation to go and attack the uh, or uh, react or combine with the anion unit. So, that is what actually happens and this is what is called the 1 2 shift. So, the 1 2 shift happens and we end up with the product as shown here. So, this carbon is the place where the benzylic uh, carbocation attaches. So, we end up with the uh, final product as shown here. Now, in this particular case, there are various competing reactions which I was telling little bit earlier. So, what are the competing reactions? The 1 5 insertions of CH, OH and NH. So, these are preferred always 1 5 insertions are preferred over 1 6 in insertion. That means, if it is 1 5 CH between 1 6 CH. between 1 comma 6 CH insertion. So, in those cases 1 5 CH insertions are the most preferred one. Similarly, if it is a OH or the NH insertions in all the cases 1 5 is the most preferred one. So, that is how here also we end up with the 5 membered ring and we do not get the 6 membered ring. So, this is uh, between 1 5 and 1 6. But when the competition is between the regio selectivity that means between 1 4, 1 5 and 1 6 and the heteroatom bond. So, there are two competitions happening whether it is the site 1 4, 1 5, 1 6 or it is with the heteroatom oxygen or nitrogen etcetera. In those cases the heteroatom bond is the most preferred one compared to the regio selective cyclizations. So, in this particular case we have an oxygen where we can form a 1 5 bond compared to a CH bond which is going to be 1 6. So, obviously, 1 5 will get the precedence. So, that insertion and the second one here the insertion actually leads to or with heteroatom. So, in other words the CO insertion is the most preferred one in this particular case. So, the CH bond alpha to the ether uh, oxygen actually undergoes the carbene insertion reaction. If that happens, if this carbon happens, we actually end up with a 6 membered ring which is not favorable. So, that is the reason we end up with a 5 membered ring as shown here.